In the last lecture, we added in a bunch of images used to display the application icon everywhere on our user's device. We got 17 images in total now displaying a different size app image. And how cool does it now look? The next thing we need to focus on and the last thing, the last finishing touch that we need to add to our application before we're ready to submit it to the app store is the launch screen. Now, what is the launch screen? If I press Command, Shift, and H twice to then close our application, when I press the application icon, for a split second there, we was greeted with a blank white screen. Now, a launch screen is basically a placeholder view that gets put into effect when our application takes, you know, an X amount of time to load up. So the bigger the application, the longer it is it's going to take to load up for our user. So in turn, we basically display a launch screen. Kind of think about if you've ever played any video game. You normally have some form of a loading screen. It's a way of telling our users, and it's more like a, a visual mind trick, that our application is loading. Just, just bear with us. Please wait. Here's something nice to stare at until the application is fully loaded up. It gives the user a visual mind trick that, you know, if the application does take a long time to load up and it's just a blank white or blank black screen, uh, the user might think that the application's broken, it's basically not working. So then turn off the application. So if we display something nice within this launch screen, again, it's a visual trick saying that it is loading, just bear with us one second, and then you'll be able to enjoy the application. So we need to create this. So how do we do it? Well, to creating our launch screen is very similar to how we design our interfaces. Back within our project, we have our main.storyboard and our iPad sto um, storyboard, that storyboard that we've been using to design all the interfaces within our application. Underneath all that, we have something called the launch screen.storyboard. Now, what is this? Well, this is, if I click on it, a whole separate entire, let's get rid of our debug area there, wholly separate entire interface that we use to design that launch screen. So as you've seen in the simulator, it was blank, it was white, it was only there for a split second, but it's there. We Basically, this is what it displayed. And we can add in our own text, our own images. You can't add in any objects and give them actions and outlets or anything like that. It's just purely simply, basically, to display uh, an image or some form of text uh, briefly to our user when the application loads up. Now, this is very important. Uh, it's not something that you should use to advertise. Maybe if you have a sponsor or you want to you know, simply advertise something, this is not the place to use it. And if anything like that is displayed within the launch screen, it's very likely that Apple re will reject it as that's one of their rules. It's basically used um, for, you know, for, for a user to look at just briefly while the application is loading. So what type of things could you actually put in here? Well, you could probably put a nice image, maybe the logo of the application, maybe some simple text saying like loading or please wait, just stuff on that kind of you know road. So we're gonna design something nice for it. All I'm gonna do is place in an image and again, add in a few constraints, make sure it resizes and different devices and see how it exactly looks. So over on Photoshop, continuing from the last lecture, I designed this pretty nice application icon. So I'm going to do something very similar to this for our launch image. I'm going to go to create a new file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 1920 uh, by 1080. as a 1080p resolution. And there's a reason for why I'm creating it like this. I'm going to add this image within an image view on our launch screen and select Aspect Fit. So this will allow us then, or aspect fill, I believe it is. So this is going to allow us then to, when the application, whatever device we're running on, you know, the image is going to get bigger and smaller and display with inside of it. And it's going to simply change and reveal more or hide more depending on what device's screen it's currently used, basically been using. So back within our icon here, I'm going to take all the kind of um, layers that we are basically within this icon and drag them over to our new template as you can now see. So I'm going to start with our background image, I'm going to select that layer and drag it full screen because it's got a nice blue gradient upon it, paste that in there 
I'm now going to simply move all the kind of hands from around it. So I'll start replacing all these ones at the very edge first, like this. There we go. Just like that. And I'm now going to go to add in a bunch more. So let's select these three layers here by holding. If I hold shift and select all of them, uh, I can highlight them all and duplicate all of them at the same time. I can then go on to move and add more stuff in. So if I rotate it a bit to make it not look like it's directly um, kind of copying it, let's place that one there. Let's move this one to about here, like that. If I rotate this a little bit more, and then uh, what about there, bring that up a bit. And then highlight this and duplicate that. So playing around with this design, again, I want to make it kind of theme to the application, theme to the application icon itself. And then uh, bring this in here. And I'll do a couple of fingers sticking up there. So we've got a little bit of a gap here, which I'm now going to actually have to add in a full hand. So like that. And let's bring this over a bit. and rotate that. I'm trying to fill up as much of the space as I possibly can. And then a few little fingers sticking out uh, the top right there should be all we now need. There we go. Perfect. So it's a weird funky design for, basically think of it as a wallpaper that I've just created. All I'm now going to do is save that by going to save for web in a PNG format. Uh, by 1920 by 1080 save that and I simply call it launch image save that to our desktop and once we've got it saved in again I'm now going to jump back into our project and the first thing I'm going to do is go to our assets folder and drag and drop this launch image now in the same way we added in our background and our logo so I don't need to add any retina versions of it using that one solid image. I'm now going to jump into our launch screen dot storyboard. I'm going to bring up all of our objects and scroll down. And I'm going to go then to add in a simple image view. I'm going to make it completely full screen and drag that all the way over. So within the actual image now, I'm going to choose to select our launch image. I'm going to change the content mode to then simply aspect fill. And then I'm going to go down to clip to bounds because we've um, selected the, the actual image to be displayed also outside of our image view. And that's what the launch screen is going to look like. It look, it's really cool. I'm quite excited to see how this is going to now turn out. So first things first, then, select the actual image view itself and then go to pin and add in constraints all the way around the edges. There we go. Add in those four constraints. Perfect. So now, as you can see, and I talked about this, the reason I made it such big like a wallpaper is because when we go to different you know, screen sizes, because we've added the constraints and then it resizes, it's on aspect fill. If I go smaller and smaller, you can see the image changes. It shows and reveals more depending on what device it's on. So if I go a bit bigger, and if I jump to iPad, it's gonna display a lot different to how it does on the iPhone and the actual iPad Pro. It's what it does on the iPhone. How cool is that? It adjusts. So if your user had the application on their iPhone and iPad, they're going to get almost a little bit extra content on the iPad because it displays more of the actual launch image. But how does this look on the simulator? Well, if I go to start building now and go to build and run, and we only get to see it for a split second. So we just wait now for it to load up. And again, it's only for a split second. There we go. And then as soon as the application loads up, it disappears and it goes into our application full screen. So because that was the first time we built and run it there, it just stay and hang around a little bit longer than normal. But if I go into it once more, now I've closed the application. There we go. How cool is that? Let's try that once more. So let's close the application down again. So we got our icon there, which is all nicely themed. Press it. We get the same kind of themed launch screen, which kind of gives the effect that it makes the app icon expand into full screen, which I kind of like that, and then goes into our application, full featured, ready to go. So the, pretty much we're all done. We've created our application. We've added all the features and all the capabilities that we need to play the game. And we can now earn money from it. 
with our banner views and our in-app purchases, and it works both on iPhone and iPad. We've got our application icons and our launch screens all set up. We're now ready to submit it to the App Store and allow our first set of users to download it and start playing our game. So in the next section of the course, in the final section, we're going to be focusing on preparing our application to be submitted to the App Store and then actually going to submit it uh, ready for Apple to review our app.